Today, we're going to do something slightly daring. You know, Zach and I are conservative. Well, I'm an old guy. You know, we don't usually do risky things, but I'm going to try something slightly risky today. But I want to be fully uh, disclosed about it. I'm going to interview Chris Everett. However, Chris Everett is not really on this call or in any of our offices. In fact, I've never met Chris Everett. Um, I'm going to, if I remember, take my hat off when I'm Chris Everett. And when I have the hat on, I'm me. Now, when I say I don't know Chris Everett, I know a little bit about Chris Everett. First of all, a lot of people know a lot about Chris Everett because uh, she's a famous tennis player who now does commentary in all of the four major tournaments, uh, women's tennis tournaments during the year. Wimbledon, the U.S. Open, the Australian Open, and the French Open. And she's gotten a little bit revelatory in her old age. I mean, she's 68. She's a lot younger than me. Um, she had cancer, I think, earlier this year. Um, but in general, she's a changed woman. And I'll describe, I think I'll come out in the course of all of this. So before I begin to interview Chris Everett, me, I just want to give uh, one paragraph, an overview of her career. Chris Marie Everett, born December 21, 1954, known as Chris Everett Lloyd from 1979 to 1987. That's a little bit of a hint. Um, she used to have a different last name because she had a husband. Uh, she got rid of that husband and she got rid of that name, which is sort of a little bit of a sign, I think. Is an American former number one tennis player. Number one in the world. Just want to, you know, number one in the world. I don't sneeze at that. Everett won 18 major singles titles, including a record seven French Opens and a joint record six U.S. Opens, tied with Serena Williams, another very famous name. Everett was ranked number one in the world for 260 weeks. You uh, uh, 50 weeks in the year are there, so that's like for five years. And was the year-end world number one singles player seven times. Alongside Martina Navratilova, her greatest rival, Everett dominated women's tennis for much of the 70s and 80s. I don't know. I, uh, I'd go for that on my tombstone if I, well, certainly if I was a tennis player. Um, let me throw in a statistic before I begin to interview her. She won a total of six U.S. Open titles. And Serena Williams won a total of six Open titles. Nine different women have won the last 10 U.S. Open titles. What's that tell you? It tells you that there's kind of a shifting cast of talented women, but they come and they're blown away. They they hit glory and bye-bye. But not Serena Williams and not Chris Everett or Navratilova. There's some people who don't accept that arrangement. They're going to try and be the greatest for the longest of all times. Um, I'm just going to mention how many, these are the women who have won the most titles. Margaret Court, 24, Serena Williams, 23, Steffi Graf, 22, Chris Ebert and Martina Navratilova, 18, 18 titles of the four great tournaments that I mentioned, and Billie Jean King. I want to jump, who won 12? I want to jump to the present. Uh, two women, Naomi Osaka and Iga Swiatek, have won four. Angelique Kerber, Ashley Barty have won three. Barty's retired, by the way, and Osaka's currently retired. So what in the world has happened that we used to have these unbelievably dominant women, dominant in terms of tennis skills, but also in terms of, what can you call it? Guts, strength, uh, focus. So I'm going to begin the 
I'm going to try and answer that question. And Chris Ebert, I make out when I'm listening to her talk is often focused on that issue. She's sort of a little bit of a psychologist. She's not trained as a psychologist. <clears throat> She's often asking herself the same question. Uh, I'm going to begin. Why haven't we seen repeat women's champions since your day, excluding the Williams sisters, Serena and Venus, now who both are retired from competition? Well, I wish I knew the answer to that question. I, I don't think these uh, women are less gifted athletes. There are a lot of great athletes out there on the tennis court. But to tell you the truth, I often I often wonder myself, what's going on that women come and they go and they fade? And I came at a time when there were women who refused to fade. Um, well, how would you characterize modern women's players compared with you and Navratilova, Billie Jean King, and Steffi Graf. Well, you know, I'm not a psychologist and I'm certainly not going to, I'm not going to brag, but they seem to be a little bit more subject to emotional pitfalls. Now, I, I'm not, we're going to maybe talk about, my life is, far from uh, absent emotional pitfalls. Uh, I heard you mention one of, one of my marriages. I've had three and there, none of them are current and that I've had cancer, but we, we stuck to playing tennis when we were playing tennis. Um, well, Chris, I was gonna mention that. I'm a psychologist that so when I watch you do commentary on Wimbledon, et cetera, you often focus in on the emotional component. You'll, you'll start out by saying, well, uh, Sviatek seems extremely tense right now. She's really coming to this match. Uh, she might be a little bit over, over energized. You're an emotional focused kind of a person. Um, that often strikes me about the player. I will, I often feel I can almost tell when they walk on the court, just looking at them, what kind of a mood they're in and what kind of a game they're going to play. Chris, I, you're not a person who talks a lot about yourself, except you've written a memoir and you sort of do talk a lot about yourself now when you do commentary. Uh, but that's not how you started out. You started out as a young teenager. I, 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 this is completely not meant to be insulting. You were a little bit of a blushing violet, a kind of a shy violet when you first appeared. Can you a little bit describe your personality and your background? Well, you know, I don't want to get into all of my emotional pitfalls, but a lot of them are pretty obvious. Everybody knows I've been married three times and I haven't been married since 2009. So, you know, that's out there. I was married to uh, John Lloyd, a tennis player from 1979 to 1987. I was married to Andy Mill from 1988 to 2006. That's 18 years. And we had three children together. And then I was married to the great golf champion, Greg Norman, for about a year and a half. Um, Chris, I began by talking about the fact that you used to be named, well, you started out being named Chris Everett, um, and then you were Chris Lloyd, and now you're Chris Everett again. Am I making too much out of that, or am I discerning that you've kind of recaptured your own personality, that you're sort of saying, hey, I'm Chris Everett. You know, I was married. That's... That's water under the bridge. Look at me, I'm Chris Everett. Um, uh, is, and that's that's the person I want to be now. I want to be my own woman. Well, let me be a little bit provocative, Chris. How would you say you differed from the young Chris Everett? Well, 
you know, I started playing tennis at a national level at the age of 14. Um, I came from a Catholic family. And, you know, they were very religious. God bless my father. He was a tennis guy. I had to toe the mark. I wasn't somebody who went out of bounds a lot. And, you know, I might differentiate myself from Billie Jean King, who a great, I admire her. Billie Jean King came up a little bit on the street. She played tennis, you know, in public courts. And from the get-go, Billie Jean, well, she, of course she's gay. From the beginning, Billie Jean K King sort of was like this to people. That wasn't me. I was the opposite. Um, I was a person who behaved herself and didn't make a lot of noise. How do you see yourself now? You know, uh, I'm 68 years old. I got over cancer. I've been married three times. And I don't want to be too blunt. I'm not pissing away my life anymore. I'm my own person now. Um, what you see is what you get. You know, Chris, I have to say, I'm aware that you came out as a little bit of a blushing violet. That was your image. People don't mess with you now. When you do interviews or when you're on, uh, you know, there's that thing, what do they call it, man speaking, where men sort of talk over women. People don't do that to you. Uh, no, people don't punk with you anymore. And I might say, Chris, you look marvelous. You tend to wear uh, sleeveless blouses or dresses your arms look great. You look like, you look like, I know you can't go out and play tennis. You look like you could do some damage. Yeah. I try to stay in shape. Obviously, if you've had cancer, you're very aware of, you know, your mortality. Um. So let me, let's just run through people I've heard you comment on. Um, uh, The next great woman's champ. Serena Williams is retired. Uh, you and Billie Jean King and Steph Gravy are decades back, half a cent almost. Um, the woman who came along who won the most um, titles was Naomi Osaka. Naomi Osaka is not playing tennis right now. Um, she's pregnant and uh, she, she had some emotional moments. And, you know, uh, people felt she withdrew from the limelight, God bless her, uh, because it was taking an emotional toll. She's pregnant. Uh, she says he's going to come back in 2024. She doesn't look like a tennis player right at this moment. Now, I don't remember. You had three children. I honestly don't remember you being pregnant. It's not in my mind's eye, Chris Everett walking around. Pray. I mean, you had three children, three sons, you were pregnant. But that didn't change the core. I mean, when they talk about your biography, they don't say, you know, she won a total of whatever, 18 championships. Oh, I wonder how many she could have won if she didn't have three children. That's not the way people talk about you. Um, now, there's another example of that. Ashley Barty. Australian champion, an Aboriginal. She won three uh, world titles. And then she quit at the age of 26. It sounds like a little bit, and that's close to Naomi Na 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 Osaki's around that age now. It's almost like women today, when they're exposed to it, maybe there's a lot more pressure today. I mean, they're on constantly on television. I don't know. I've never been a national champion. Um, now I'm gonna once again. I know you agree with me. Um, I agree. Naomi Osaka, if she wants to take time off, it's a free country. It's a free world. If she wants, I'm gonna to stop go you for one. I'm sorry. I'm gonna stop you for one. You got something on your bottom lip, so you should. I'm just gonna so that you don't have it on the rest of the time. All right. Sorry. Go. <laughs> so she's decided to take some time off. And I just, of course, I want to point one little thing out. Um, she made $20 million playing tennis. And that doesn't even count 
but I'll just let me just mention Naomi Osaka is a Japanese national. I believe her father was Jamaican and her mother was Japanese. So uh, she's the first Japanese champion. I, I would think the first J Jamaican champion. So people really, you know, a lot of people were rooting for her. Exactly. She's, you know, somebody coming from a different part of the world. Great natural talent. Um, and I, you could see it took an emotional toll. Um, I would comment on it. You know, she was obviously the best player out there, but at times she would become almost emotionally unstrung. That's something you largely avoided. Well, nobody avoids, you know, a couple million people watching you in Wimbledon center court having emotions. But I was brought up and I lived that I had a task in front of me and I wasn't going to be swayed from doing that. Um, now, you know, I, I I root for everybody to follow their own life paths. I want, you know, Naomi Saka to be happy. Um, I, I want uh, Ashley Barty to be happy. I guess I am looking for that great next national, international champion. Okay. Let's get to the bottom line here, Chris. Do you see that great national champion anywhere? Well, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, the last uh, international tennis match was won by Coco Golf, an American. Um, I'll mention that she's African American. There have only been a couple of individual championships won by minority women. And so the fact that she won Wimbledon uh, is a great, great inspiration. Well, Miss Psychologist, could you put your psychology hat on? Um, uh, how does she differ from the others? The women who've had more or less emotional breakdowns? I I don't know the whole story. Like a lot of great champions, her father was big in tennis, interested in tennis, but he was also a big insurance executive. And so the way I figure it is he didn't need uh, to be Coco Goff's manager to have a, his ego fulfilled. And he did something, of course, all of them do it. My father did it. Oh, the Williams sister's father did it. At some point, your father's going to have to turn you over to some somebody who's a real tennis pro. And um, she's done that. And in the, this case, she's done it with a kind of an interesting person, Brad Gilbert. Yeah, I wonder about you and Brad Gilbert. I mean, uh, yeah, you don't get in fights with people in TV booths. You're an agreeable person. Brad Gilbert's a little bit of a, he doesn't put people down. He's a little bit of a mansplainer, though. Uh, he's sort of almost a compulsive talker. Oh, Brad's great. You know, I love Brad, but uh, I, I won't say you have to put it. You have to let him know when it's time for him to stop talking. And here's the amazing thing about Coco Goff. Coco Goff is now 19 years old. She's won three championships, twice the U.S. Open and once the Australian Open. Um, but she's a very self-possessed lady. She still gets on the court with jitters. And there's where Brad Gilbert comes in. Coco Goff has won nine out of her last 10 tournaments. Her father, I don't know how he figured it out, hired Brad Gilbert to be her special coach. She's won nine tournaments since she's being coached by him. You know, we're not playing tiddlywinks here. If you, that that's tens of millions of dollars. If you pick a guy to help you win and you start winning international championships, you're going to make a place for him at the table. On the other hand, Brad can be kind of annoying, can he? 
Well, I was just going to say that you're now allowed to coach from the stands. It, uh, it used to be illegal. And so Brad Gilbert sits at one end of the court. And whenever um, Coco Goff comes to that end of the court, he starts talking at her. He starts saying, oh, you remember, do your bag, blah, blah, blah. You know, he just starts giving her directions. And in the semifinals of Wimbledon, she turned to the stands and she said, Brad, would, would you mind being quiet? Now, what 19-year-old in the semifinals at the U.S. Open with 10 million people watching you turns to an older man and says, uh, Brad, you're talking too much. I'm trying to concentrate here. Could you be, would you mind being silent? And it wasn't a put down. That's the great, that's one of her great, she has the skill afterwards when people said, were you, were you telling Brad to shut the hell up? She said, no, no, no. I was just saying that uh, I had to concentrate. And so I just wanted him to give me a little chance to concentrate. Think of that. I mean, I, I couldn't have done that when I was 19. Um, she has the self-possession to get out there, stand up for herself, play championship tennis, rely on a coach. You need a coach, but tell him, put him in his place as required. So we, we began this little bit of a journey here talking about, well, there was an era when women used to win 10 and 12 and 18 and 24 uh, world championship matches. And that, not counting Serena Williams, who's a latter day miracle, uh, that has stopped happening after the 1980s and 1990s. It doesn't happen anymore for the last dec decades. And the question is, is there and why is that? I'm not a psychologist or sociologist. I don't know the answer to that question. I don't know. You would think that women are getting stronger now, that they're more encouraged to be independent. Um, and yet, with all due respect, if you look back to me and Billie Jean King and Navratilova, we were kind of tough. And now Billie Jean King grew up on a street, not, not in the streets, but she played public tennis. Navratilova is Czech, and she had to come here at a young age and adopt to a whole new country. So I don't know if that's an answer. There are people who've had such tough backgrounds that they had to become tough, although I myself had a privileged background. But leaving all that aside, like I say, that's beyond my pay grade. Um, you say you're a psychologist. Maybe you have an answer. I don't have an answer, but here's I want to, I do have an individual answer. Is Coco Golf the resurgence in a modern era of a woman who can go out and play tennis? She's beautiful, of course. Be a great athlete. Be polite to everybody. She, you know, when she knows how to give a speech, she thanks all of her opponents. You know, she thanks the referees. She, does, she doesn't get in fights. She doesn't get in trouble. Not even with uh, Brad Gilbert, even when he's motor mouthing. Um, and she keeps her eye on the ball to win the tournament. She still only won three tournaments. She's, I, I think that's one less than the, uh, Naomi Osaka. So she hasn't really gotten the same as Barty. So she hasn't broken out into the clear yet and to stand head and shoulders above uh, other women, women of this era. But let's just say from a psychological standpoint and a social standpoint, this is a woman who really bears close watching. And I, I think maybe you can tell from the way I'm speaking, I'm really rooting for her. Um, you know, I'm 68. She's 19. Uh, I'm not putting all my eggs in her basket or putting pressure on her. But let's see if. Coco Goff can become the next great repeat tennis champion, hearkening back to an era that I participated in. 
Chris, that was really, really great and interesting. I really appreciate your keen analysis, your appreciation for the ins and outs of other women tennis players, young tennis players, the pressures they face, uh, your honesty and frankness about your own background, and, you know, how you sort of had to break free to become the woman you are today, where you don't take any guff from anybody. Uh, you're single, and I understand that you're by your, you got your own name, you're on your own. Uh, how you live your life now is totally up to you. It's got your name, it's got your brand on it. You're you. Took you a little while to get there. And we're seeing if it's possible for somebody like Coco Gauff to get there a little bit earlier than you. Thanks so much. Well, I hope I haven't revealed too much about myself, but you know, uh, these are burning questions for me. And I think about them at every tennis match. <laughs>